Hello, I'm Linda Ann Smith, and today I'm visiting outside of Studio ABC, a little over two hours drive from my home at Vicki Ross's studio. Vicki and I are both color art video creators, and today we're playing with twinkling H2Os on Yupo paper. Vicki was kind enough to guide me through this because this is my first experience ever to even see Yupo paper. Vicki and I are facing each other in the studio. She has a camera over her and I have a camera over me. In this video, you'll only be able to see the view from my camera, but understand that both of us are working at the same time on separate projects. So shall we begin? All right, guys, we are here. And if you'll turn your Yupo over, it's white on the back side. Okay. I love the way it feels. I know. Okay, for those of you who don't know, Yupo is a manufactured paper. And it was developed for industrial reasons. What do you need, babe? I'm going to show one on this camera. Oh, okay, that's right. The original usage, when I came to know it 15 years ago, was for commercial printing. And it made beautiful menus. If you'll remember back quite a few years, and even today, places like Chili's print their menus on this. It's indestructible. It holds four color process printing beautifully, and somewhere along the line, somebody decided to try to put watercolor on it. And it works great. If you don't like what you're doing, you can erase it all the way back to white. Now that's a detriment. It's also really cool because you can lift your whites after you put your color on. If you use a hair dryer carefully, you can blow pigment around, and as the pigment is blown to the edge of the water spot. The pigment will be darker on the outside edge and actually makes irregular rings, which yeah. make perfect looking flowers. So this is all we're gonna to do today is the, play. Let me show the, okay. this is what Yupo looks like. <gasps> That's what a camera falling looks like. <laughs> After you work 45 minutes to get your camera up and I destroy it in one second. You didn't do it. Yeah, I did. I touched it with the Yupo paper. Oh, okay. I did it. I get credit. Okay. We're not going to touch the camera tripod. <laughs> okay. I wish I could show you guys what we've got set up here. This <laughs> is a selfie stick in a pottery dish and we're not breathing on it. Uh, it's um, first thing I'm going to do is just wet some marks on the paper. And I've got all the water. Uh, here. Can, okay. We're sharing back and forth here. Yeah, we got this big Ms. wonderful Vicky surface. Has just all over the. Yeah, I'm just splashing it on there. Okay. And I think that for this, and I don't think I need the piece of grass. Splash it on. I think I'm gonna go with warm colors. And then I'll go with cool colors. All right. And we need more water in our. I'll pull these over here. I'm gonna save this little purpley red one. Okay. Okay, I've got some cool colors over here, and you've got, you need a warm color. And there's a pipette there that I really saw that. is neater to put the... water in these. These have to be uh, conditioned. I saw it a minute ago. Here it is. So what do you do with the pipette? You just squeeze, squeeze, squeeze the water Squeeze it first, yeah, get water, but... and then drop it in the... Oh, okay, into the... No, in these. Oh. That's how, that's how you can wet them. Excuse me. Yeah, these have to have water put on them. I'm not understanding the directions well, there. I'm not aware. I yet. used it. I used a syringe for a little while. Now I just use a spray bottle. Yeah, the spray bottle gets all over everything. Yeah, it does. I'm working with cool colors. Miss Vicky's working with warm colors. We have a setup going, and there's a green on that side I want to use. Okay. Uh, that's awfully. That other color's awfully warm. So that other green. The key lime or something. Yeah, I okay. think that's what it is. It looks like it. I love key lime, but I'm not going to put it in yet. Now, I'm just going to add some red. Now, Linda Ann has worked with these more than I have. Actually, my reds with are... With the twinks, little... but not with the paper. This is my first time ever to work with this kind of paper. And I have to start with my favorite color. Mediterranean blue. Oh, nice little bleed there. Blooming right out. Isn't that fun? 
And so can I squirt water onto it after well, it's there? You can do whatever you want to do. Let's see what I can do with that. Linda and I are both on the creative team for color art. And uh, it's just very tickling that we get to show you new products. And what I like to do is film raw. And I mean raw by, I don't practice first. I don't either. Because I want you to see what I go through during the creative process. I love the way it flows on this paper. Here, you it really brush. moves, doesn't it? Yeah. Splash, splash, splish, splash. What's that song? This Yupo paper feels kind of like a plastic film, but it accepts the watercolor really, really well. Now remember, if I don't like any of this, I can get rid of it. Really? Yep. And we're going to show that to you. Ooh, that's a nice dark color. I may regret I, that. This may be the when I don't like it and it's time to wipe it off. Or maybe just add some water to it and spread yep. it around. Let me try your spray bottle. And there's another spray bottle right there beside you. Oh, okay. Beside me. Um, right there on that shelf. Oh, I see it. Bigger no. one. I'll work with the little one first. can't get this one wet enough. I'm going to dip back into that and move that other places. You can hold your paper up too and let it drip. Oh yeah. The nice thing about not taping it is I can let it move. Just like this. Woo! I don't want it to move too much because yeah, I want you, to... Yeah, you want to keep your colors separate. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Oh wow. Now, if you want to, you can put salt on it. Okay. I don't right now. I like that little softness. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of salt, salt on yet. mine. Mine's What's, awfully wet. It's not ready for salt yet. I didn't know there was a wet and a too wet for salt. Really? Learn something from each other. Linda Ann is a real art teacher. <laughs> I'm a fake art teacher. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, and there, every rule in art can be broken, too. Uh, and broken successfully. But I always waited until the shimmer of the paint was almost gone. The, the, I'd look at, the, look at it sideways till the kids look at it sideways, and when it was almost ready to be dry, then we put the salt into it, and it soaked it up. And if it's like this, I think the salt will soak up too much. It my... might. And what the salt does is it sucks up the water, and then it, the pigment stays on the paper but in an erratic pattern. Is that sort of the chemistry, Linda? Yes. It uh, It's really good for making, like when you have kids making blue backgrounds and they want, want it to look like it's snowing to put a little salt on. We used to go outside when it was snowing and we would do a background and like I said, we would make, wait until it absolutely just, at the moment it looks dry, We'd walk outside and catch snowflakes on the paper, and then that would push push it back. So they had a, it didn't actually show the snowflake print, but it pushed it back, and the kids loved it. It's all about the kids. I'm calling that a cool color, but it's against these other colors. It's a warm color, because cool and warm are relative, just like big and little. That's the art teacher talking. <laughs> Linda Ann's got the heat tool on her side. Okay. And I've got the, if my camera went off. And where would the heat tool be? Right down there to your left. To no, my, to your right. To my right. It's so on the shelf. Okay. okay, then I'm going to blow dry, but I don't want to disturb that. That's so pretty. And it's awfully wet. It's going to take a while. I'm going to blow straight into it so it doesn't move too much. Uh, maybe I don't. Now, you can use that to push right. the color, but you have to be careful that you don't totally blend it. No, that you don't melt the paper. Oh, okay. Oh, I got an awful lot of water on here. But it's drying in some of the areas, but I've got big puddles. 
Oh, that's interesting. It's changed shapes. We may be here all day just for me to dry this. They won't put that one. I didn't mean, mean to make a river on it. So Vicky's gone after a straw for me. And I'm still drying, but I don't want to dry that too much because I want to do something there. I really liked the way this looked to begin with, but now I like the way it looks again. How fun is this? Push it right up there. Woo! I think I melted it. I think I got a little too close. Yeah, because you've got the heat yep. gun. Yeah, I got a little too close and melted my paper. So I've got a little... A little Woo, I got a lot. Look at there. Yep. Okay, well, I learned something, didn't I? Yeah, the heat gun, hair dryer is really better for this. Yes. Alright, we just learned something here that a hair dryer is better than a heat gun. And this little hair dryer has a cool setting. going to lose my turquoise if I'm not careful. But I guess I can put another layer down later. You can. And you just have to be real careful because every it's kind of like working with gouache. When you put, and gouache is a heavy body of pro, uh, watercolor, watercolor, for those of you who don't know. And um, when you put one layer down, you can go over it if the one below it is dry. But if you scrub it, you'll raise that, you'll reactivate that first layer. But you wouldn't end up with little pills on your paper, would you, scrubbing? Because this no. is this is a kind of paper that wouldn't do Heat that. Heat is the only thing that will hurt it. Oh, I managed to find that out right away. Heat's the only thing that'll hurt it, so what did I do? I buckled it. Even after I was warned. Isn't that pretty? It needs more. It is so much fun to introduce another artist to something they haven't done before. And believe you me, there are millions of things any of us have never done before. How's that for English? I'm not an English teacher right now. I'm not grading papers today. I've done English papers too many years. I calls them like I sees them. I never thought I would write without proper punctuation on a text message or something, but I do. It's like, okay, this is fast. No capitalization, no punctuation. <laughs> so much for I was going to leave it like it was. <laughs> <laughs> Look how pretty that is. It is too much fun. Okay, that's the first layer. Now, I want to show Linda. Take a small brush, Linda. Just mark okay, it. small brush. Now, wet your brush kind of mushed together. The, maybe the pigments didn't give you much texture, visual texture. Take your wet brush okay. and just very lightly wet it and then blot it. And it goes straight back to the original white. Oh, look at this. It's lifting. It totally comes off. Look at it lift. Now with watercolor paper, now, now clean your brush a little bit, if you want to. I mean, you can and then you can encourage that pigment to move back and then into that area. Pull that water up by just dabbing your brush in and pull it. Boy, that works well. Isn't that cool? I gotta do a face. So even if you goof, there are no goofs. Look at this, such detail. And then you can blot it if you want or not if you want. Oh, it can go to pure white. But it doesn't have to. It doesn't have to. If you don't blot it, it won't go to pure white. Um, I'm going to use a terminology here called a thirsty brush. And that is a brush that's damp, but you have squeezed it with your tissue or paper towel. And then that will pick up any extra water, like so. This paper shows the shimmer better than most watercolor, watercolor papers. Look at mine. Look at the shimmer on it. Let me show yours. Wow, you got some great texture. There's a paper in the uh, pastel industry called Wallace paper. And one time at a trade show, Kitty Wallace brought some 
shirts. And the only thing you had to do to get a shirt with her name on it was to tell her your favorite way to use Yupo paper. This stuff is basically indestructible. It's like industrial sandpaper, but it's on an acid-free paper backing so that it's archival. One girl wrote, I love Wallow's paper so much, I, I just use the same sheet over and over and over. I can wash it off and repaint on it. <laughs> That's what this stuff is. If you don't like what you've done, you can wash it all off and start over. <laughs> paper Etch-a-Sketch. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Remember those boards that we used to draw on that were so hard to draw on, but then you just lifted the sheet and the pic picture disappeared? I can't remember what they were called. I don't remember that. You didn't have that? It was a little slate, and you it was like wax-backed. Oh, yeah, what yeah, yeah, What was that yeah, called? Yeah. I don't know, but it... Uh, but all you do is just lift up the sheet, and then it was gone, and because it was, gone. it was actually where it was sticking to the wax that it was making <laughs> the picture. Now, I don't, I have a tendency, as you just saw me do, to get down in there and take out pixel-shaped areas. Yeah, that's what I'm doing, taking out teeny little areas to give it interest. And I'm going to try just blotting right off the water off on the towel, and that works too. I'm very deliberately leaving a tiny line right here. This is so much fun. And see, that's wet right there, and it didn't completely lift because, as Miss Vicky said a moment ago, my brush wasn't thirsty. It needs to be thirsty. Need to, it's still wet. The brush is still wet, but you wipe it off on a paper towel and get it to where it will absorb, and it just siphons up into the bristles. That is so cool. Oh, shucks, I just got rid of the bird. Uh-oh. Bye-bye, bird. Ah, he's still there. He's just not as pretty as he used to be. <laughs> Painting in areas I want to be a different color. And then it, it's kind of pushing back that paint where it gets wet again. I've got pigment on this side over here. I, I was putting some of this Mediterranean blue into it. Some pigment so I could get some more of that really neat shimmer from that. And because I love the color. And it ended up pushing some of the color away around it. So that's made another nice texture. Loving it. I don't necessarily think I want mine to be anything. I'm liking the textures and the colors and the way it just runs together and the lines that I made with the straw. That looks so cool. So, Miss Leslie O has a secret formula. Miss Leslie O is the owner of Color Art, and she is also the chemist who developed the paints. And she's still developing them. There's new ones out right now. Um, I don't know when this will air, but. There's a new line called Vivid that is vivid, and I can't wait to get my hands on them. Wow, I love these paints on this paper. Isn't it cool? I can't wait to, like, paint a floral with this. A floral on this background would be amazing. You can always pick out really, really cool abstracted flower shapes with this kind of a technique. I'm using a little bit of key lime here on my bird. I think I have a deer. You want to see my deer? Yeah. Um, he's got a head coming down this way, and he's got an ear over here. I see. If you look hard enough, you'll see a face. Oh, I already saw a face, but I didn't like it because it was kind of scary because I covered it up. <laughs> we don't want no scary faces. My scary face is all we need. No competition here. I don't want any competition. I want mine to be the only scary face. Isn't it fun to get together because you get to be silly with each other? I know. Um, <laughs> when you do videos, you're silly by yourself, and sometimes it's kind of scary to anybody that might happen to hear you sitting in your room talking all to yourself. I don't usually talk. When I'm filming, I do because I just can't keep my mouth shut. Well, I voice over, so and I've... Uh, one of the things I used to try to teach my kids at school was that 
when you're talking, your left brain's out there. And if I want to really do my best with artwork and let, get into whatever you want to call it, right brain, left brain, um, a lot of people call it inner muse, but if you want to get into your creative levels, the quieter you can be, the more it resonates sometimes with most people. Not everybody's different, but... Try it sometime, though. Um, if I'm doing a wall painting, and I'm painting something serious, like a realistic face, I find that if I have my music in my earbuds, that my left brain stays busy. If I just listen to it on a speaker, it doesn't have the same effect. Oh, really? That's right. I don't have and any the, earbuds. I better get some. And the other thing is that if you can put your computer beside your iPod or whatever and listen to a, a book on tape, that is miraculous. You can lose three hours and come out of it and you look at your painting and you go, where did that come from? See, the listening doesn't bother me, but the talking does. And I've, I've talked long enough that I can, like I'm talking now, and I'm having a good right brain experience here but I've taught long enough that I've, I can cope it with it but if I really want to get serious about my art to, I'm playing today I'm just playing and dabbing and whatever but if I want to get serious about it and there's something specific that I'm painting I'm quiet I'm very very quiet and I you know I think people ought to try out different modes yep try to see the difference see what causes we call it left brain, right brain, but actually what we're talking about is where your your brain goes on autopilot because it's busy with either the music or the written word or, or the spoken word. And it's not sitting on your left shoulder going, don't do that. You can't do that. You're breaking the rules. Well, you need to do that. That's not any good. So it quiets that voice so that the child can come out and play and go, what happens if I do that? Oh, and that's what that's Picasso cool. was talking about when he said all children are artists. It's just that we need to remain art, find a way to remain artists. Because kids don't care if it's perfect or not. And, you know, if they're one leg's longer than the other when you make a person or something like that. But they do get to a stage where they care very much. And that's, you know, that's growing into adulthood. And that's when they give up their childish ways. I did a video that's free to watch. Well, all of my videos are free to watch. I think Glendan's are too. Where I talk about the three stages of human life from child to middle age, adult to older, the, the older third of your life. I timed it to Beethoven's, one of Beethoven's sonatas, the Pathetique. And each stage of life is put to that one piece of music. And it's nothing but slideshows. Uh, famous artists and quotes that they make and one of the ones that resonates with me is Picasso saying it took me four years to learn how to paint like Rubens and it took the rest of my life to learn to paint as a child. Many beginning watercolor students are afraid they'll make a mistake and that's the reason that they think watercolor is hard because the mistakes might be difficult to fix. On UFO paper, you can use the twinkling H2Os all day long and just change it and erase it and fix it and paint again. And if you don't like it, you just take it out under the faucet and wash the whole thing off and start over again. So try your twinkling H2Os with UFO next time. Check the description box below for my links, Vicki's links, and Color Arts links. And don't forget to subscribe and share, leave a comment, and thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching.